Nick Talks presents the Black British Experience. Why should, would it be more special? For no, 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 do you, do you, Hi, I'm Nick, and this is Nick Talks <laughs> presents Business 101. Yeah. Are you happy now? Oh. Is that better for you? Yeah, but... So the one you're on has to be part of party. No, 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 not at all. That's, that's Hi, I'm Nick. <laughs> 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 I got that uh, news for you. Go on. Okay, um, so I'm Monique Zofia. I run a beauty business specialising in eyelash extensions and brow services in Birmingham. Okay. I'm going to say your eyebrows are on fleek. Yeah, they are. as they always. Are. They're always. very even. I've assessed them. I can look at the perpendicular angle. <laughs> and, some, yes, and the eyelashes are. <laughs> and uh, you? I'm Ashley. Um, still work full time as a PE teacher. Okay. And I'm a children's author. Um, and I do speaking when I can get a chance to do it as well. So. Okay, that's good. Hi, my name's Gabriel. I run a cocktail bar restaurant in Birmingham called Cyan Cocktail Bar. So, yes. would you consider yourself as. Fully employed or partly self-employed, partly ex-employed? Um, it's, uh, it's quite difficult. I've registered it as a um, registered company. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm still working full-time. So I would say it's more... The, even though it's a registered company, it's a little bit of self-employed, whereas there's, there's no staff at the moment. And it's okay, funded yeah. by my job. Okay, yeah. So how are you finding that balance? Um, it is difficult. Most of, you have to make it work. I mm -hmm. think a lot of people give you their blueprint on what they need to do, but you realise that as long as you go on your journey, you just make it work. How about you, money? Are you still working? Yeah, I'm still in my nine to five and my business, my eyelash business, <laughs> literally that's why I'm a crook. Um, it's hard work and it's not easy. Like. You have to be so dedicated to make it successful when you're working your nine to five. But I would never give my nine to five up if my business isn't where I feel it yeah, needs to be. So it's really a catch twenty two. You've got to put the hard work in, and it's not easy. But you know what? I keep going and I keep trying. So like, I will finish work and I will go straight to the shop where I work from, um, and I'll be there sometimes till ten o'clock. I'll be there till sometimes eleven o'clock. Um, but it does take out reaching people in the daytime, but it's got to be done. Mm. It's something yeah. got to be done. You know when you've got an end goal and you see where you want to be? Yeah, it yeah. It keeps me going. I don't know mm. how you guys feel. You're probably on the same wavelength. Yeah. Are you... Um, I've been self-employed about 12 years. Yes, yeah, well, yeah, so go on. I've, never, <laughs> um, well. I've worked, like I've had jobs, so yeah. I've done cleaning jobs. I've So a lot of times... When I, try to, when I speak to people, speak to kids or whatever about business, I explain that there's always a process to it. Mm. Do you know, I didn't just open a bar restaurant. Do you yeah, know what I mean? I've, I've worked as a cleaner in the same college that I was actually studying. In. So you've got to imagine yeah. that there was times when I have to like hide when I'm cleaning. <laughs> so like the students <laughs> who, I'm, who I'm trying to do bad boy with don't see me yeah. <laughs> cleaning inside the... Inside Did the, anyone ever catch you? No, because I used to do the cleaning when everybody left. Okay, but there right, were times right. when people might be mingling around. I just quickly take the gloves off, just like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> off in the like corner, kind right. of thing. But I'm so often, it's a good thing that you haven't left yet. But the only issue I'd say with that is, um, do you have clients who you could attend to whilst you're at work? I don't really market to clients that I can reach during the hours of nine to five because I don't want to open those doors because then I'll be like, I want to do more so then I feel like I'll probably be more in a situation where I don't want to go to my nine to five like yeah. I'd want to really focus you, what's that you saying that people that you do work nine to five yeah well. so they're working mm. people they know that my first appointment will start at half past five okay. and they know that my latest appointment will be like at nine o'clock I thought you meant you, do you mean people at lunch yes yeah, so what I mean oh, basically yeah. is that so yeah. I, I would advise people not to leave their day jobs when they're doing um when they've okay. got their little hustle on the side not to undermine anything that mm. someone's doing but Hustling, people see it as a dirty word. I don't see it as a dirty word. Yeah. Hustling is whatever you're doing to yeah, try and yeah. make ends meet. So if you're doing your hustling, I would say, until that hustle is making you enough money to go on your own, mm. don't yeah. leave it just yet. However, okay. mm. if you're working a nine to five and you've got customers who you could be attending to during that nine to five, then clearly you're not going to get to that point yeah, where you could true. leave your job because you're missing on those customers there. That is really that, yeah, 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 that if, if that makes sense. So before I, before I open the bar, I always say to people that you can, you don't need to own anything to make money. Mm -hmm. for, for, for example, an estate agent doesn't own the houses, 
mortgage broker doesn't earn the money. I've got a lot of friends who are self-employed for over 10 years and all they are the middleman. They've mm. got a huge network of people. So if you need something, they'll, they've got a connect for you to get it. They'll ring and say, boom, boom, boom. How much do you want for that? Yeah, okay, yeah. so I've got a friend who doesn't do websites. I'll give you an example. He has, he's never ever built a website in his life. He has a website advertising doing websites. So what he does, <laughs> yeah, no, no, be yeah, serious. So what he does, yeah, people come yeah. to him for websites. The person who does a website charges him 200 pounds. He charges 300 pounds to the website. So yeah. people think he does website, he doesn't. Yeah, so people come to him, it. he'll get the website done, he makes 100 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't, yeah, done, yeah, he hasn't yeah, done anything. He and I always say that sometimes it's good to subcontract the work first so you don't yeah. have to invest a whole heap of money, mm. if that makes sense. So you can see if it's working. So let's say, for instance, I don't know, let's say you want to start a removal company. Find, a, find someone who does removals, okay? Mm -hmm. Use them to do the removals. And if it gets to a point where you're saying, do you know what? I might as well get my own van and get my own fleet. Because you know that you can invest that money and it's not yeah. going to be to be a loss. I do think it depends because I used to do that mm. all the time. Like, I've done that to save up a lot of money. Mm. I've stopped now. But it depends what business you're going into, mm. I think. It's hard, like, for lashes, that would be hard to contract. I used to do things like um, find accommodation for contractors. Okay. But what it is is that a lot of the times you can make money off things that people can't be bothered to look for themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what I always used to do. Yeah. I've done that for like five, yeah. six yeah. years. But it just depends on the field. So with that, that was easy. You could literally just sign up to certain um, websites that people don't want to pay for mm -hmm. subscriptions. Then you just charge the people for finding it, like mm -hmm. a finder's fee. Yeah. But with certain industries, you can't really be the middleman or the middle woman. Yeah. You need to be physically present. Like, yeah, something like what you do. Something yeah. like that. Yeah. I need to be yeah. present and... I wouldn't be able to subcontract to anybody because mm. people are coming to me like yeah. my brand is my name and mm. people know that it's me that's carrying out the work so mm. if i was to get i don't know sally from across the road mm. and say sally's gonna do you like <laughs> you'd be like it's no. not happening today you can't play them guys you're not allowed I think, to be you'd be, you'd be, yeah, su you'd be surprised you know if, if, get stronger, if your brand gets strong enough and you're you're teaching these people okay, how to do it properly enough. that's when it gets there but yeah. right now mm. it's not gonna happen so what is it about you why people come to you because it's not just a lashes why they come to you no. do you know uh, it's no it's not but to not sound big heavy sometimes mm. i think it's actually just myself yep it's a me yep. and 100%. I can talk and talk uh, you, it's, you. it's me 100%. Yeah. it's me and i've got uh my background is actually in psychology so my nine to five psychology my degree in psychology so when people are coming people are coming with all sorts like yeah, people are coming yeah. with problems yeah. people are coming with you know just general yeah. offloading and i feel like that's what's drawing, drawing mm. people to me as well. And it's unique because I know a lot of people just want people in and get them out. Yeah. Mm. I don't want people to just come in and come out. Like I want mm. to get to know people. So yeah. I feel to myself that that is what it yeah. is. <sighs> Figuring out my pricing. I did do a scope. I checked what people were charging. Mm -hmm. um, and I basically asked what I thought I was worth. Okay. And yeah my prices they're not cheap so mm. in birmingham you can get lashes for 25 pounds mm. my lashes don't start at 25 pounds okay. um my experience like the amount of courses that i've been on the mm. amount of money that i've invested mm. it's mm. worth paying the money for the knowledge that i've built mm. up in the field this isn't something that i'm just doing mm. off the whim or just yeah. doing because i can yeah, yeah. do lashes mm. like i'm investing in it and yeah. I feel like it's important to reflect that in your pricing. So what about yourself with your books, probably? What in terms of pricing? Yeah. Um, the way I most children's books are seven pounds. Um, a lot of them when they go into uh, marketplace, they get discounted to four pounds. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. the Gruffalo, for example, you'll rarely see it for the seven pound price because places like Asda and Tesco were shut down the price straight away so they can get more people in their store yeah so yeah. a lot of people will use things like books especially when they're popular just to get people in and then obviously they'll hopefully mm -hmm. buy other things in the shops mm -hmm. um so the reason why i done it at five pounds was because i thought um i'm not as well renowned as the largest person doing it like david williams or julia donaldson who wrote the gruffalo mm -hmm. they're at seven and even if they're getting discounted to four pounds let me try and come in at a, um, a price close enough yeah. which was five and i think with the price as well it's quite competitive and i didn't even though seven pounds doesn't sound a lot it's quite expensive for a children's book so i didn't yeah. want to come in at a high-end price and to be honest i didn't make the book to create it into a business the book was um teaching children at, at primary school 
I thought, you know what, let me make a book for them. Okay. Let them see themselves in the mm. book. And it's only because we sold so many. And then I put a video online um, that uh, I've sold so many books. Because after I sold 500, someone bought 100 in Manchester. Oh, so it was like 600 in the first week. Wow. I put that video online and then it just kind of had a mini viral. So it was okay, like 40,000 yeah, views, yeah. Canada. Brooklyn, people in Brooklyn are like, we need right. more books like this. See the power of the internet. So power then I was internet. like, okay, I'm onto something here. And then I kind of kept on pushing it. And then I was just everywhere that like, you wouldn't see me without yeah. it. Um, but at the same time, like what Gay was saying, does that mean it's a lucrative business? It is, it is difficult, but um, I want to get the books out there to a place where um, the demand's coming in because the demand's not as strong as it was when the book first came out yeah. to go into different places mm -hmm. um but that would be the place where I get a, a book out every year mm -hmm. and go into schools because at the same time because of my background leaving school with no grades um going to college going to uni redoing my gcses mm -hmm. while i was at university when i speak to children about that they're quite well they find it quite motivational yeah um, and so they should so it's kind of twofold the position that i'm in when i Go to other secondary schools when I get the chance, not so much now, but previously, um, and just speak to different children when I was um, doing supply. Mm -hmm. Just let them know my, my journey and whatever. They're like, you know what? I really appreciate what you've said. Yeah. So it's kind of twofold, like inspiring children. And obviously this is kind of a product of, of what I'm doing. But, but it's um, an expensive process. Like, yeah, to, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and some people... Um, didn't spend a lot. You have Yeah, book as well. Yeah, I wrote a book about what seven, eight years ago. Okay, yeah. what's it about? Um, it's about like men and women, the same nonsense that we get up to. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I wrote like 2012. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah, it's expensive, so it's an expensive process. Um, yeah. Well, it's not a cheap process, but where you're telling me you're selling your books for five pounds, mm. that's why you mentioned it about the lucrative part, because I know exactly how much it is to write these books, mm. which means there isn't much margin you've yeah, got to sell yeah. for him to leave his day job mm. to do that got he's got to be selling about let's say in a month he's got to be selling a minimum of about a thousand copies a month Jeez. for him to leave his day job that's the minimum mm. to make it worth it leaving his day job minimum that's five grand a month no 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 but remember it's not all profit oh, yeah, remember, yeah, yeah, remember yeah, the five thousand remember the, the, the book's probably costing about yeah. two pound yeah, fifty three yeah, pounds so do you know what i mean so like, the margins are not huge enough for him to say uh, yeah. let me to yeah, even yeah. take a day off work, even if he had days off work yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, fair yeah, it's the money. See, I've never published one, so mm. I wouldn't know that. But now you've broken it down, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. What about yourself? How did you come up with your prices at, at the bar? Do you drink? I literally just looked that? around the local area to mm. see what everybody else was charging. And then um, I then decided to break down all the ingredients bit mm. by bit that go into the cocktails to figure out how much the cocktails are costing me. Okay. Then I put the multiplier on top to what I need to sort of sell it for. So yeah. it sounds like everyone's been doing some field research. Yeah, you have to. You have to. It's got to be thorough because what I realised in my first year, I didn't do any of the background stuff. Like I was just doing it off the rim. Like I've been lashing for three years now. Mm. But are you passionate about it? Yeah, this is yeah, the thing. So, so my first year, she, I couldn't even call it a business. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. serious about it. I didn't see. I was just, you know, going mm. along my mm. way. It got to my second year, and I was like, right, I need to start taking this thing a bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. And there was so much background to pricing and it's that's when the passion really kicked in now yeah. i'm going into my third year mm. and i'm seeing what other people are doing three years mm. in and i'm just like i need yeah. to do more so yeah. that passion again like that yeah. drive is it's there mm -hmm. now and it's it's yeah it's so fun i can't yeah. even expect <laughs> that business it gets me excited that's good like, it that's gets good me thing. so excited man do you, do you still feel excited about going to the bar um do i still feel excited um, I wouldn't say I still feel excited, Yeah. but for me, it's it's not autopilot. So when I first opened it, the enthusiasm was there. The enthusiasm yeah. is still there now, but it's just it's just autopilot now. Yeah. It's just business. It's just but that's why you've got to enjoy what you do because you don't have anyone to be accountable to. Yeah. Different when you've got a nine to five, you've got your boss, you've got HR, you've got appraisal meetings. When you're running your own business, you've got no one apart from yourself to be accountable. That's why I've got a mentor, and I always say that if you are in business, to have somebody that you're accountable to. So okay. that, for instance, 
he or she can continuously ring you and say, okay, have you done this? Have you done that? Have you done this? You said that you was going to do this by last week. Has, why hasn't it been done? So that you are on top of things. Mm. If not, because well, no one needs to wake you up. Yeah, sure. Like when you run your own business, yeah. like there's no if you if you there's no alarm, there's no nothing. It's you that needs to just wake up, and that's the hardest part yeah. with businesses that self motivation. And I always say that going self employed isn't for everybody, and people need to stop dissing nine to fivers because there are plenty of people who are doing nine to fives yeah. who are earning more money yeah. than the self employed. Yeah, and obviously there are there are people who are self employed earning more than nine to fivers. But this sort of vitriol that is spewed at nine to five is like oh leave your job go and work for yourself then you can never be rich listen listen listen, listen. it's yeah. nonsense it's nonsense not everybody can deal with the stress are there are some people who are hairdressers they leave a hairdresser to open their own and it fails because they were good at hairdressing but not, yeah. not good at running yeah. business yeah. That's the, yeah. two, two different, different things, things. Yeah. and people yeah. don't realize that it's two you could be a great chef but crap at running a business mm. and people don't understand that just because you're good at one thing doesn't mean you can run a business mm. so when like, there's a lot of friends around me who are trying to get into business now, and I always explain to them that. For instance, one of my friends is going to write a book now, funny enough, and I told him first to start blogging. Mm. Blog first. See how many people you've got reading your blogs. Okay, so if you've got 40,000 people reading your blogs every single month, you know you've got an audience to sell the books to. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? There's little things like people don't... It's the hardest thing is to transition what you're doing into business, to turn something into something tangible. Mm. And I always say, try and go the soft route first. Blog. Blog is free. Blog first. Mm. If people are willing to read your blogs, yeah. they'll buy your books. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's always a cheap way to to start off oh, before yeah. going. So if you want to open a bar, a restaurant, a bar to me is like an event. It's like promoting. Do you know what I mean? So I used to do events. So because I knew that people were coming to my events, I knew that okay, if I open a bar, I don't, all I've got to do is promote. Yeah. And people will come in. So yeah. start the small way first. Okay, promote. So people are coming to your to your events, to your dances, to your parties. Okay, open a place yeah. and bring them there. Yeah instead do you know what yeah. I mean? there's always there's always a soft way to to start first so if someone's doing hairdressing some people will start in their house for instance yeah. if, if it's getting to the point you're having too many people coming to your house first of all check the overheads of what it's going to yeah. cost you because some people will be doing it in their house they've got all these customers then they realize they forget about rent or do mobile rates. Hairdressing there's or so much stuff that people. involves in a building that somebody could have a hairdresser but you could be making more in your room yeah. Yeah. So, so people don't sometimes people want the glitz and glamour but don't actually realize that it's not all fun and games yeah. i can tell you hands on I've had bailiffs at my door before. When I first opened, I didn't know about business rates. <laughs> like, I just opened the bar because I had money. I didn't, there's so much stuff I didn't know. I opened the bar, I thought you could just ignore business, like it's just, yeah. I pay it one day. I had a 9,000 pound bill. I'd have to pay it. They said, listen mate, you're going to open at some point. Because obviously he said, where are you? I said, I'm at home. He said, oh, we're here waiting for you. I goes, oh, I'm not coming in. He goes, listen, you're going to open at some point. You can't I've remember. Seen, I've seen my opening hours. It's Wednesday to Saturday. Five. You open at some point. I have to pay the whole nine grand. It's all a learn, like business is a yeah. learn. Yeah. It's not a joke. But if you can learn from the mistakes of other yeah. people first, then you'd be all right. How would you say to go about getting a mentor? I would, like, my mentor's younger than me. Yeah. And some people are like, huh? Yeah, because he's in he's in a better position than I am, and he's where I would want to be. Same industry. Yeah, so, same. No, he's in a different industry, but he's into yeah. business. Yeah. And I always yeah. say that it doesn't matter the age of the person. Yeah, yeah. What you're looking for is somebody, and I always say that you have to get mentors in stages. So, for instance, he's my mentor now because I'm at a stage where he's in a position better than I am. The moment I surpass him, yeah, and I will one day, I don't find another mentor. But I always say yeah. keep your mentors yeah. at stages. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes, sense. like. As much as it'd be great to have Warren Buffett as my mentor, okay. yes, he can advise me, but <laughs> he's so far away from me. Don't okay. I can still learn things from him, but I think for me, because he's not from my walk of life, mm. and sometimes people are like, oh, what does that matter? It matters because there's certain struggles that I go through interpersonally, mm. that mm. there's certain things that he's not going to understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Also, not saying that because he's come from a wealthy background, there's certain struggles in business that he probably won't get. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So my mentor gets it. He's been there. So he can advise me on certain things to do, whether to spend money there, don't spend money there, do this, do that. So it's very important to, to get a mentor. And the age for it, the age of the person doesn't matter. Just someone that, for me anyway, that is in the same walk of life as you. Yeah. So they've come from where yeah. you are, because there's nothing wrong in handouts. Because sometimes people will say, oh, um, Donald Trump was given a million pounds, so you know you can't really use him as, as a gauge for business. Well, let me give you a million pounds now, flip it. Mm. No, Flip it then, innit? If, if it's that easy, if, if, if it's that easy as a handout, yeah, there's a meal, yeah. I want a million pounds back next year. Yeah. You'll be stuck. It's not that easy. Yeah. It's not that yeah. easy. Yeah. It's the same for your mentor. 
No, 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 he's free. Okay. And I don't think mentors should charge you. No. I don't think they should because they should be doing that out of the kindness of their heart. But it doesn't mean that you can just ring them at any point. Yeah. So you have to bear that in mind. Cause That'd I be got, a balance. Because mm, I mentor two people and they can ring me within reason at any time. But it's more for accountability. Your mentor, for me, is someone that you can be accountable to mm. mm-hmm. so that they can chase you and say, yo, it's Wednesday. Have you done it? Oh, no. Nah. Okay, what's going on? And that's all it is because yeah. when you're self employed, I've done it 12 years. It is hard. Oh, people don't realize they see, like, obviously, it's lucrative because my business does well, but there's some people who it doesn't go well. And I've seen people lose yeah. 100 grand, 200 grand. Mm. It's not just, don't just open, people have money and just exactly. open something. You think you can just open a restaurant. Like, there's a restaurant that was four doors down from mine. They've changed hands four times mm. in the time that I've had mine for three years. Mm. So they can't use location as the argument mm. because we're in the same location. So what is it? Something about you, I was having this conversation the other day saying that just because yeah. you've got money doesn't mean that you've got the the mindset to hustle or make yeah, have a big business. A lot Sorry of people go, say because oh, I'm winning. Sorry to cut you to go back to the mentoring. Um at the moment I do a mastermind phone call with my sister okay. every two weeks. Mm. So um we have three things that we need to get done over the two weeks. Mm. We obviously because we're close, we're WhatsApp and whatever, have you done this, have you done that? Um and then every two weeks We'll go over what we've done and mm-hmm. set three new targets. Now, at the start, when I was like doing the book and getting ready for the launch, I didn't need none of that. Like, mm. but at the same time, it was me, literally like taking my teacher hat off, putting my author hat on, and then every evening I was working. Yeah. Now, I can't work at that rate. Like, I can't sustain it. Yeah. So, I need the mastermind group to say, you know what? Focus on these three things, okay. get them done. You can still do other things that are on the, ta- the to-do mm. list or whatever. Mm. But some people, that's why I asked if, if you pay, because some people mm. see the word mentor and think it's someone that's rich, that's successful, no. mm. that's not going to no, no, allow me to yeah. do it for free. But yeah. obviously you can, just like, if you've got a friend that's doing yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Mm. You can Even just if get, you're you not just, doing the same, yeah. I mentor loads of friends. I've got friends that are my mentors. It's just mm. someone that's able to give you that. Yeah. outsiders view a lot of people them. mentor each other but it's because they don't come up with the rollers oh i'm the mentor yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. like yeah, 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 it's not about a title yeah yeah, yeah. You, you share mentoring quite often when you're talking about business and you can confide in someone about um thinking about this or whatever you know what I'm yeah this might not apply to you but you too it might do with regards to have you ever had any difficult customers clients and how how have you addressed because obviously you can't right. <laughs> in your head you might be thinking <laughs> yeah, See, you can't first of all for me the customer's not always right and they're not always really? right really so perhaps some businesses teach it that the customer nope. is always I 100% right. agree with that <laughs> nope. I agree however your customers are your business yeah. so I always give some kind of space for disrespect yeah. there's a level okay. where I'll let you take me for a pussy or there's, a, there's, there's levels to it okay but then there's a gap in it so for instance I can bend you know, I'm not rigid. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you're yeah. trying to take me for a pussy, yo. My grandma didn't raise me like that. So I'm going to have... I've had it I've had it at the bar where someone's tried to run their mouth. Big birthday, man. I told them that this birthday was not going unless this person goes. And I've told them the birthday yeah, of person. And the person's had to leave. <laughs> like, you don't, yeah. don't just come and start trying to bag me up because you need to give me £7.50 for a cocktail. <laughs> Bridging, I'm all right. Like, I don't take disrespect at all. Yeah. Like, if something's wrong, let's say you've, you don't like the drink. No problem, have another one. I do apologize. That you don't like the food, yeah, yeah. No problem. but when you start trying to just be, you know, these there's customers just pricks. There's some people in life who just have a, who just have a bad day, and they let you can tell from their countenance that you just know this is going to be difficult from the first phone call. You're just like, hmm, now we're fully booked today, it's not going to happen. You but can just you, tell you, 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 you should have the right, really, though, to to for you to ease that client for you mm-hmm. like some some of some of the people that have approached me i'm not that last check for Put them in, yeah. yeah and yeah. they are actually not that client for me mm-hmm. and you've got to wheel that out and mm-hmm. i haven't had any difficult experiences with anybody I haven't had anybody be disrespectful mm-hmm. but i think for me respect my time mm-hmm. like lateness courtesy if you're mm-hmm. gonna be late just say you're gonna be late it's like mm-hmm. i feel like with black businesses People wouldn't treat it as yeah, a yeah. white business. Yeah. Like if you're mm-hmm. booking to go to, I don't know, Gaucho. Gaucho. Yeah, you're going to phone them and say to them, 
you know what? I'm running late. I'm really mm. sorry. When it comes to black yeah. businesses, I'm so sorry, but people are not mm. phoning to say. Mm. And then when you turn around and say, I'm really sorry, but your appointment's cancelled. They kick off. They kick off. The table's gone. They're kicking off. (laughs) Who's fault is it? Who's fault is it? Do you know what I mean? It's true. So those that those things for me, I find it difficult. Those are the difficult things that I encounter. Like I don't know if as a community and people that I've got um, social media posts about, you're too accessible. So I've been told by certain people that they don't want to be. You got to be the face of your business, but at the same time, when you're too accessible, people take advantage of that as well. And then they feel as though they can't taste. There's one phrase people say is that familiarity breeds content. Exactly. And the moment people are familiar with you, black people in general are very familiar. Yeah. Very much. Like yeah, even when course. you come somewhere, like when people come to the bar restaurant, I will say, good evening, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Can I take a jacket? I don't do the whole, yeah, what's happening? You're cool. I give them the same service I'll give anybody else. Yeah. Because I don't want that familiarity. Yeah. Because the moment you're too casual with your customers, they're going to be casual with you. So when, when yeah. it's time for disrespect, they're going to disrespect you. Yeah, I don't exactly. take no bad up. It's not happening just because you're going to give me some money. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I'm giving you a service back. You want to yeah. go out and enjoy yourself and have a food and meal. Someone wants to come to you and get their eyelashes because they want to go out or look good. Mm. Don't come and disrespect me because you're paying me money. Yeah. No, 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 no. That's what but, people think as well. I think mm. sometimes I'm giving you money so mm. I can be rude. But on the flip side, whatever you say is in the tin, make sure it's in the tin. Yeah, okay, so yeah. that's one thing we've got to do as not black businesses, business in general. Sure. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Because... People always often say, oh, people don't support black businesses. They do. They don't support the bad ones. Because mm-hmm. barbershops have been sustained for the past 30, 40 years. Okay. Black hairdressers have been sustained for the past 30, 40 years. I can think of mechanics who are black who have been, and all their customers are black. So we do. We yeah. just don't support the bad ones. No, that's yeah. true. And, that's true. And my bar restaurant has been running for three years by 95% black customers. And mm-hmm. I've enjoyed. So it's not a case of black people don't support. They do. Just whatever you're... Black people are very finicky. Whatever you claim is on the tin. Like, they will read they read in everything. You told me I was gonna get twenty six <laughs> lashes on each eye. There's twenty four. There's twenty four. There's twenty four. Listen, oi, whatever you say you're giving black people, they won't do it elsewhere, but for you, if I'm giving you my money, you there's twenty four eyelashes. You told me twenty six. That works out to be that works out to be a five percent discount. Where's my five percent off? <laughs> oh, is it listen, hey, right, listen, oh, and, don't, and one thing: discount. don't budge on your prices. Listen, people have money. Do not, you watching? <laughs> yeah, anyone true. that's going into business here, yeah, you, you, do not budge <laughs> on your price. I'll tell you why. Black people talk. The moment you give that person a discount, yeah, she's true. gonna tell her friends, "Hey, you know what? Monique done mine for forty-six. <laughs> so true. I don't know. Where's she down with the sixty pound? You know, it and then she's gonna, she's gonna ring your Monique, raw. Brenda told me that you should own yours for forty-six. <laughs> so I go and be. <laughs> Don't keep <laughs> <laughs> Listen, whatever that your price true. is, if what you're offering is quality, yeah. and this is the key, if what you're offering is quality, mm. do not budge no, you on your price. Yeah. Because, because you're black, people sometimes assume they that they, they must give you some, that it must be cheaper, but uh, I can get it cheaper. Go there. No. Go and buy it from there, please. Go there. there. Go there. And I've also been with your friends, there. don't expect discounts as well. If they give it to you, then Go it's over there. But don't come with that sense of entitlement because I know you I need to have I do this not budge on my price I, think, yeah, I don't budge I do not I think budge. one thing that needs to be addressed as well um, people have the, the opinion that everyone's going to support them just because I've started something, but at the same time, if it's not yeah, a level of excellence, you, know, you, 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 you don't have to support. And uh-huh. if you know them, just say, I want to support you, but it needs to be up to scratch. Well, no, you know what? It depends, though. Sorry yeah. to cut you. It does depend because support can come in all different ways. Yeah. And it's not just that somebody, okay, for example, your book. If someone doesn't buy your book, that doesn't mean they're not supporting you because they could be talking about it, mm-hmm. they could be True. sharing it, they yeah, could be yeah. telling you. You don't know what there's different types doing, of support. Mm-hmm. There's so many different types of support, but I don't feel like just buying you know, or someone coming to me to do their eyelashes or do yeah, their yeah, eyebrows. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I'm I heard saying. someone say that about um I can't remember who it was, but someone said um people buy Mercedes Benz cars. Do they feel like they're supporting the company? No, you buy it because you, you want, want that you car. Want it. You're not you supporting it. it. Supporting is something different. But don't have the the perception that people will support. No, do you know what I always say? I'm Nobody happy with anyone owes buys you anything. Book. And yeah, I think exactly. once you, you get that in your head that no one owes you anything, you'll be okay. Because that sense of entitlement will go. 
you don't need to because when you start thinking people owe you things you, you get mad at your friends if they mm. don't like your things mm. or share it and this that nobody owes you anything if they like something they'll they'll like it mm. if they want to share it they'll share it that's just that mm. so so what's the end goal then in regards to lashes because by the sounds of it you seem very apprehensive to actually want to go full time no no no. it's not it's not there's no apprehension there's there's moves that are being made like i said i'm mm. coming to this three year mark and this is the first time that anybody would be actually seeing my face. Yes. So, okay. I yeah. so, get out there. Yeah. Nobody's oh, okay. 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 So, yeah. after you search a people person, <laughs> no one She's not my face. On my Instagram, <laughs> there's no pictures of me. So, just, 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 just eyes. Just eyes. Just, 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 just eyes. eyes. <laughs> so, I feel like I've got a plan now going forward. You'll be seeing more of me. Okay. Debut today. But, <laughs> um, that's in the pipeline. Um, and I also feel like where I'm at at the minute, me actually providing a service is only so far that I'm going to be able to go because there's only so many hours in a day mm-hmm. that I can yeah, sit yeah. there and I can lash a client or mm-hmm. do eyebrows mm-hmm. for a client. So there's moves that are going to be made in terms of mentoring, education. Teaching. Te- Teach- yeah. So there's money in yeah. teaching. There's, yeah. there's, mm-hmm. there's moves and I've changed my brand name now. So mm-hmm. it's now MZ Lash Artistry. Mm-hmm. Um, which is going to reflect what I'm going on to do in the future, but I'm not talking too much on Could it. Could you do mobile lashing? I used to do mobile lashing, um, but it was affecting the quality of my work. So okay. I'm in a, a stable place mm-hmm. at the minute and I'm looking to grow from there. Um, but okay. What about you, Ashley? What's your next next step? Um, the next step is... No, you said releasing a book once a year. But yeah, yeah. Hope, what we're in that, 19. So the book... and. Another book will come out in 2020. Hopefully, a book will come out every year after that. Um, a lot of people have asked me questions about being an author. Mm-hmm. So this later on this year, um, I'm going to put out a small book. It's probably going to be an ebook about um, how I sold 500 books in two days, mm-hmm. and do a video um, teaching session. So people will have 10 videos to watch. Every video will have a task, and it'll be accessible without me physically having to do it because yeah. teaching full-time doing books on the side yeah. everything else that everyone else does um it's quite difficult so i want to try and put a product out there that you can access without having that face-to-face conversation yeah jump online me, so. you can yeah. you don't even have to nowadays you can get those free online websites and you can pass their protect pages and sell them as courses. Yeah, yeah. I used to do all this stuff. That's, that's <laughs> literally, yeah. like, yeah. and then you just do it like that, literally. Yeah. That's, that's what Everyone's it's... online now. That's yeah. the thing to do. Mm-hmm. But yeah, literally, before I qualify, I used to do all these hustles. <laughs> so if you want to know, <laughs> message me. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I've been in Birmingham. Well, I moved there September 2015. Opened the bar April 2016. And um, yeah, so I'm, well, not, well, not selling it, but it's going to be under new management. And then I'm moving back to London to open one in London. So that was the aim. I wasn't meant to be in Birmingham for more than six months. I thought I was just wow. gonna, I thought I was just gonna open it, and go and set up and go. But then it just doesn't. Yeah, for small businesses, yeah, yeah. when exactly. you when you pump your money into it, and this is the thing is that baby, when you dump that much money into it, you have to supervise it until it's at that point. And it's mm-hmm. taken. It took me about two and a half years to get it to that point where I can just do my thing. Mm-hmm. So I can go on holiday. I can do whatever. But I've grafted. So when I opened April 2016, I was doing 100 hour weeks and literally 100 hour weeks. So I was doing a Wednesday, three till 12. Thursday, three till 12. I was doing Friday, three till five in the morning. Saturday, three till five in the morning. Sunday, three to, so I was doing 100 hour weeks and that's the graft that you've got to put in. Yeah, and if, so that's why if you don't it. enjoy what you're doing, don't don't, remember, that's the graft back, of hospitality. Yeah. Does that make sense? So it's graft is different for every business, but for hospitality, for what I was doing, I've grafted. I learned how to make cocktails. I didn't know how to make cocktails before. I thought I could just stand in the corner and just be like, um, ghost from power. <laughs> yeah, I'm in my long trench jacket, you know, I'm saying it to my friends, what's up, you know, what's up, you know, overseas. There was one Sunday when my staff called in sick. So he rang me now, he goes, oh, sorry boss, can't come in today. I said, Said, what do you mean? Yeah, because he was like, he was like Polishy kind of Russian. Yeah. I can't come in today, I don't feel good. I said, Raw, Kovac. <laughs> what do you mean you can't come in today? Like, who's gonna do the cocktail? I'm sick. I can't make cocktail sick. I said, Alright, cool. So I went into the bar now. I don't know how to make a cocktail. The customers came in, they wanted like a mojito. They said, Can I have a strawberry dakairi? <laughs> I said, I said, <laughs> I said, Raw, like, I can't. We're only doing no, spirit I, I, and mixes and wine today. 
they go, it's a, it's a cocktail. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I had to learn to make cocktails. Yeah, so, well, so when okay. my staff call in sick, okay. I can go well, behind well, the bar yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. shake. And that's the thing with business, that like you have to learn your craft. Yeah, yeah, and well. also, your customers respect you more when they know you know how to do it. So when people come in, yeah. I clean the floor, I sweep, I mop, I collect glasses, I tidy up, I make cocktails, I learn how to DJ. Like I do, I slot into mm-hmm. every way possible so that where I was paying a DJ 800 pound a month, I did it myself. Mm-hmm. Where I was paying a manager 2,000 pound a month to do the stocks, to do the pricing, I learned yeah, it myself. So yeah. I saved myself 2,800 pounds by just learning my business. Mm. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And, and that's just so sometimes just something as simple as that, as just learning your craft and saying, okay, cool, I know how to make cocktails now. I know the pricing. I know my stock list. I know my par levels, meaning how much um, rum I need, how much coke I need for the week, how much. But I wanted a manager to do that because I wanted to just chill. But then when I put the books down, and people don't, a lot of people in business, they do not check their books. Checking your books means. Every single thing that is leaving your account, everything you're spending money on, the passion fruits, the, the, the drinks, the straws, the bev naps, every little tiny thing, the bleach, everything adds up. Because yeah. I was, for instance, I was doing rum punches when I first opened at seven pounds, yeah? And we was doing about, say, a hundred rum punches a week. I increased it by 50 pence to make it 750. So a hundred times 50p is what? That's 50 pounds? Yeah, I'm not mistaken. Pounds, yeah. yeah. So I was making an extra fifty pounds a week by adding just fifty pence. Now that's two hundred pounds a month. That's two over two thousand pounds a year yeah. Yeah. that I made by just adding fifty p. So now you realise yeah. how significant a fifty p is. It is. Mm. When you're not in, accounting. Yeah. No, imagine now I wasn't accounting for that fifty p. That's two thousand pounds. Last, and oh, in yeah. the three years as well. Yeah. And people don't understand yeah. that it's the smallest little things in business. People say, "Oh, look after the pennies, and the pounds will make look after themselves." It's so important to break. Yeah every single little thing down so you know whether this is worth my time or not yeah. and that's business like it's not hard like people do all these courses business is very simple you buy it at a cheaper price you sell it at a higher price there's no it's not no rocket science we're not building airplanes it's very simple like with the lashes you're doing obviously it's very difficult what you do do you know what i'm saying but with what you're paying for your lashes and to the service you give it's very simple the lashes are costing me i don't know 10 pounds my time, because sometimes I've got friends who were doing, who make t-shirts, and I asked him, why are you selling t-shirts for 20 quid? I said, how long does it take you to the do this time, t-shirt? I said, it, it, takes, it takes me about three hours to do all this print. I said, wait, so you're selling t-shirts for 20 quid. It takes you three hours to do this t-shirt. You're paying yourself less than minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? The time, like, well, the time. Like, I, that's how I calculate my yeah. business and things to do. Doing? I, my hourly, okay, how much is this hourly rate yeah. as well? Yeah. Like, you, can't work from, you can't work, you can't work. I just work from just nah, you putting a random price I always like, think, course. how many hours is this level of work going to take me? And then I, then I give people a price. Yeah, so those people, sometimes do. people do, but they don't break things down. Every You've got to break everything down. Yeah. When I first opened the bar for the first three years, first three months, I was making money, but I was losing money. So I always made a profit, yeah. but there was so much money just going away. For instance, for you lot that go to two for one cocktails, watch what they, watch the amount of alcohol they put in your cocktails. I stopped doing it. <laughs> I went to one cocktail course and I realized that they were just splitting the, the, the same alcohol oh, to, yeah. and they were splitting it to two. So basically I was doing it the right way and giving customers the what they're meant to get. So when I sat back after like six, seven months and I went to this course, I stopped doing two for ones because see with black people again, they will taste that and say, yo, <laughs> big man, we can't taste the rum in this, you know. Me, <laughs> <What accent? laughs> Listen, oi, they will tell you, I cannot, this, this isn't, this, no, this isn't, no. Listen, they don't play, you know. So I stopped doing two for people, like, oh, why don't you do two for ones anymore? I stopped doing it, but people still come and buy the cocktails, even though I don't yeah, do two for ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're offering something, and quality. once again, don't budge on your it's price. Yeah. It's, the, it's the quality you... You don't want to sell yourself short, and no. people do sell themselves short. It's like what I was saying to you about mm-hmm. my first year. I sold mm-hmm. myself short. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh my, I learned my lesson, and I looked at my books, I looked at my figures, I looked at my ingots, I looked at my yeah. alcohol. All of that in my first year, I didn't mm-hmm. pay attention yeah. to it, not a, none at all. Yeah. And when you really focus on things like that, then you realize, hold on a second, yep. yeah. my prices need to change, I need to mm-hmm. account for my time, I'm working for free, it's all so important. Yeah. That's it, and I always say that, um, if there's always someone that will be willing to pay, especially if they yeah. see that it's worth it, so, and if they really want your service, yeah. they will pay for it. Yeah, 100%. So, there are people that will pay, 
and the people that don't want to pay they're not your clients they're, they're not, not for you, not for you. So if somebody so is charging yeah. three pounds for a cocktail mm -hmm. two pounds for a book yeah. that's not that's your customer, customer. that's customer. not your client i don't want you that's why i don't like me i'm good over here so is there anything that anyone wants to say to wrap up I'll, i'm gonna um put your socials on the videos anyway but, um no any final words if you've given you you some good gems just, anyway. just don't just don't budge on your price <laughs> honestly <laughs> whatever you whatever your time is worth do not budge on your price okay. because the moment you remember with pricing i've always said to people you can always go up but you can't, can't go down the moment someone sells to say something's up for like they charge 50 pound an hour Moment I start seeing dropping to 45, 40 pounds, I'm like, hmm, what's going, why, on, why, what's going on here? It's like, same if you go to buy food in a shop mm -hmm. and it's seven pounds and one day it's now five pounds. You're like, how much is this cheap? You're like, hmm, have the ingredients changed or yeah, is no one yeah. buying it? What's, yeah. or even yeah. a price yeah. like a book. Do you know what I mean? If you're starting very low, when you want to do a sale or discount, you're going to be yeah, losing yeah, out because yeah, it's only so low you can drop But at the same time with psychology, some people feel like, oh, it used to be seven nights, five, I'm mm -hmm. getting a discount. So sometimes they use that to try yeah, and make people purchase. I guess different industries different, change. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, some good yeah, books, right, for instance, things. sometimes they're discounted because they've sold so many now, yeah, yeah, the yeah, next yeah. one's coming yeah, out, yeah, we yeah, just want to yeah, get rid of it. So yes, obviously yeah. you can reduce prices in, in, because you want to. But with food, not because I would someone's be like, like, yeah, yeah, not because you have to. I'd be like, no. why is it cheaper? Is the quality of less? People will pay. If it's good, They'll pay. People will pay. Don't let people take you for pussy holes. What about yourself? Any tips of advice? Don't give up, like it's not easy, it's mm. it's hard and if you aren't willing to put in the graft and you aren't willing to put in that mm. hard work, mm. don't yeah. do it. Yeah. It's not for everybody yes, else. When not. you're first starting out, you are going to be working your full-time job with another full-time mm. job mm. and yeah. it takes commitment and you've got to keep going, keep mm. the momentum yeah, going and you will reap the benefits of it. I'm not where I want to be yet, but... I know where I'm going yeah. and I know mm. what's going to happen from yeah. it. So you just have to keep going. Yeah. So I love how on. everyone's at different stages as well. Oh, so and it's... expand your social circle. Your network is everything. Network. You will not grow <laughs> past your social yeah. circle. Yeah. All your friends and the people around you, the furthest you can go. So the more people you meet, mm. the bigger yeah. the network. When people talk about, oh, why are you excited about followers? The more followers I have, the more people I can sell my stuff to. Yeah. Obviously, the world is bigger than social media. But back in the day when people used to do things, they had to fly up. You don't need to fly anymore. Mm. Even though there are people outside of social media, so it is good to still do other forms of marketing, mm. but use your platform. Yeah. And if you've got friends around you who, as you said, support comes in different ways. Mm. So for instance, someone might not be coming to you to do their lashes, but every other minute they're reposting your stuff online. Yeah. Mm. That's something, yeah. that is some kind of support, but expand your social circle because you're never ever going to grow any bigger. Especially now that circle. Um, people are not, they're not taking information so much from influencers because they know a lot of people are just getting paid to put things on. Mm -hmm. But people that have got a smaller following, mm -hmm. a couple hundred, four hundred, whatever, yeah, they know yeah. that's just their network, that's just their friends, so they'll take it. That's one thing that. I pass on that I've learned from mm -hmm. you is your network is a net worth. I've actually man. started to be more sociable. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've, I've it's right. absolutely true. It's true. No, it's important. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Thank you.